Hey guys, so I'm sorry if you hear snoring in this video. Tucker is sitting right here and he's sleeping. So this video is going to be things I wish I knew before actually going to school to get my phlebotomy certification and before I became a phlebotomist. So what I wish I would have known, first of all, is how difficult it would be for me to get a job as a phlebotomist. If I had known that it would take me over two years and I still wouldn't have a job, I would have just gone for medical assisting in the first place. I would, because with medical assisting, phlebotomy training is included with your medical assistant certification, or at least every program that I've looked at, it is. Um, you may not get a certification for phlebotomy, but you definitely get phlebotomy training as part of that certification. <clears throat> so I would have just gone straight for medical assisting and not bothered to get just a phlebotomy certification. Um, while I do think it's helpful to get any sort of healthcare certification that you're able to get, there's not a whole lot of people, at least in my area, that want to just hire people that are certified in phlebotomy. They want you to have a phlebotomy cert and a medical assistant cert or even to work at the hospital. They want you, like if you were to work as an ER tech or whatever, they want you to have a CNA plus a phlebotomy or a phlebotomy plus an EMT certification. So I would have just gone straight for medical assisting. Um because like I said, you do get that training as part of the process of becoming a medical assistant. I wish that I had known that people are not willing to give newly certified phlebotomists a chance to get experience. Like every single job that I have looked at, except for maybe two or three, which are not straight up phlebotomy um, it's more, well, one is, and two were like blood donation or plasma centers. So um, that's a little bit different than like if you were to work in the hospital as a phlebotomist and every single job description or like job posting that I look at, they want you to have two plus years experience, but nobody's willing to give new grad phlebotomists or newly certified phlebotomists a chance, at least in my experience. I have applied for literally every single job opening that comes across my site for phlebotomy, and I have not been able to get hired for any of them. The farthest I've gone is a couple interviews with the Red Cross, which you don't even need to be certified for them because they will literally train you. And that's the thing. I feel like you're better off getting a job like that. I wish I had known that. You're better off getting a job with someone who's willing to train you on the job instead of spending your own money getting a phlebotomy certification. And it's sad to say that because there's a lot of people who want to progress in the medical field, but they're stuck with these entry-level positions because people aren't willing to give them a chance with the higher certifications that they have. I'm not saying that phlebotomy is bad because it's considered entry-level in the lab setting, but it's, it's just frustrating. Like, there's a lot of people that I know that worked as CNAs, went to school, got the training, got certified, and haven't been able to progress, they're still CNAs like me. Um, <clears throat> I have been certified since before I was even married, and I've been married for almost two years at this point, and I still have not gotten a phlebotomy job, and it's really frustrating to say that because I spent $1,300 on a class that has really taken me nowhere other than I'm certified whoop de doo um, So I feel like there's a lot of job opportunities, but again, they don't give newly certified phlebotomists a chance, or at least they haven't given me a chance. I have contacted, I have followed up after like applications, after interviews. It's really frustrating. And honestly, being a phlebotomist and being a CNA is not really that different in pay because they're both considered entry level in their fields. 
Phlebotomy is entry level for the lab setting and CNAs are entry level for the nursing field. Um, it's just really frustrating. I feel like if you are wondering whether you should get certified as a phlebotomist or whether you should just go for medical assisting, I would definitely say medical assisting. My program, my medical assistant certification program consisted of medical assisting information, phlebotomy, and EKG. We not only learned how to place the leads on people, but we also had to learn EKG interpretation as part of our class. So technically, we are able to get certified as a phlebotomist, if we get enough sticks, as a medical assistant, and as an EKG tech. So I'm not planning to do that, but it is a possibility. Um, but anyways, I just, I feel like if I could go back in time, I would definitely not pay for this certification myself. I would have gone to look for a place that offered on-the-job training because it's so much easier. Um, and yeah, I was looking on Indeed to see what other people said. And like about what they wish they knew before they became a phlebotomist. And, like, I would definitely say research the job market in the area that you want to live in. Um, this says, most workplaces want more experienced phlebotomists. Like I was saying, people are saying they're wondering how it was to work as a phlebotomist or in the medical field in general before COVID happened. Um... Somebody said that I would not find a job, hard to get a job without experience. It has become a very popular job, which is true. It's become very popular. I've seen a lot of people talk about like getting their phlebotomy certification. But then again, at the same time, I've talked about this in another video. Phlebotomists do not leave their jobs because it's such a good career technically to be in. A lot of people really enjoy it. It's not as physically demanding as other areas within the medical field. They don't leave their job. So you have way less turnover than you do as a CNA. Like everywhere in my area is hiring for CNAs right now. Every single nursing home, every single hospital, they are in desperate need, like to the point where they are offering thousands of dollars as sign-on bonuses if they can get um, CNAs. But phlebotomists, there's like eight. I see maybe eight. When I go on Indeed, I see like eight jobs. And they're not all phlebotomy jobs. Some of them are like um, ER tech jobs where they want you to have phlebotomy training. But um, yeah, it says it's hard finding a job. Job placement for this field is harder than I expected. I wish I had done more research on which places to apply at and the demand for workers at these locations. I wish I would take in the class earlier on in life. I wish I knew about how it hurts getting attached to my patients and clients. Difficult to find a position without experience. That you don't make any more money having it than somebody that doesn't. That's so true. Like at the Red Cross, when I was um, going through their interviewing process, literally, you do not have to have a certification in phlebotomy to work at the Red Cross as a phlebotomist. They will train you. You go through a weeks long training process and you get paid the same if you have a certification as someone getting paid that has zero certification. So... I mean, take it for what it is. That's all I want to say in this video because I think this video is long enough. But let me know, if you're a phlebotomist, what are some things that you wish you knew before becoming a phlebotomist? Because I'm curious to see if I'm the only one that's been having so much problems or so much trouble finding a job that will hire me. I know I'm not the only one, but it's really frustrating and... Anyways, if you guys would like more topics on CNA, nursing, medical assisting, phlebotomy, 
let me know and I can make you guys another video talking about this topic. And I will talk to you guys again in my next video.